Welcome to Total Picture Media. I'm Peter Clayton, and thanks for joining me for part two of How to Avoid the CMO Money Pit. If you've not done so already, I recommend you watch part one titled The Setup, Finding the Unicorn, before you watch this video. I'll take you inside the search, the hire, and the results of VanillaSoft's Chief Marketing Officer Search. Part two is titled The Hire, The Fit, The Results, and features the principals of Perry Martell International, David Perry and Anita Martell, and the unicorn, the rainmaker, the rock star, Daryl Prail. Enjoy. I've been recruited numerous times with multiple jobs, and I've had the opportunity to be exposed to multiple processes along the way. Often what they're trying to do is trying to match a skill set with a need, and they're viewing it from the point of view solely of the employer, which makes sense since they're paying the bills, and they want to protect themselves to make sure they present a good candidate, that they look credible, and that they don't have to worry about the candidate leaving and them having to backfill you know, a, a warranty that may be provided as part of their services. Mm -hmm. I get that. They have a business to run. It's all about you know, margins. They do it right, and life is good. The difference between what I've experienced before and David and his process is multiple. One, he is far more candid and straight shooting with you as the prospect, the candidate, than any other recruiter I've been with before. Two, he will tell you why you're a good fit or why you're not a good fit. And he will give you blunt, candid feedback throughout the process, which is often difficult and, uh, to get out of other recruiters. They tend to protect the employer and share little with you. Three, he will coach you on the questions that you need to ask because he understands how you're motivated. So he gets into your head as far as what you prioritize in life and what it is that you want out of a job because he understands it's more than just matching a job description with the candidate who can fill it. He understands that the company, the employer, and the prospect, the candidate, need to have a cultural fit, need to have a, a meeting of the, of the ways when it comes to their integrity and how their work style is. David Hood, who's the CEO of VanillaSoft, and the team around him all said that they wanted someone that was going to challenge them, really challenge them. Remember that? Really challenge them. So what's the first thing Prail does when he comes to a quote-unquote interview? Is It was another business meeting for him. He asked those three questions. He drilled right down to get at the answers. He was satisfied, and then he turned and let us uh, do our meeting. That's when I knew. That's when I knew he was going to take it seriously, and that's when I knew we had the right guy. The other part that I really like about David is that he tells you what you need to do to make this opportunity work, which means he'll be forthright with you on, shall we say, the weaknesses or the challenges the employer is experiencing and where they really need your soft skills, not just your hard skills that are on a resume, but your soft skills specifically. So that was incredible. When it comes to the actual process, it was the most thorough vetting I've ever gone through. When I, whilst I initially said I wasn't interested and then I went out of obligation because I trust David and then I had interest and then I wanted the job and then I had to slow down because he goes through a very intentional process. Much of that is out of the sight of the candidate, out of me, because he's working with the employer, getting mm -hmm. all the stakeholders uh, aligned, making sure expectations are managed, you know, if not dealing with the employer so they have their house affairs in order. He does communicate that to you, but that does also affect the schedule and the process. So you know what's going on, but sometimes you have to trust them. He's always right. He's never been, he's never misled me. Uh, his Advice he shares on where the strengths and the weaknesses are and any opportunity have always proven to be right, not just in the moment, but three months, six months, a year down the road, you can look back and say, yep, that was right. And that's what, and, the, and now I really see why I was the right candidate versus somebody else for this opportunity. The part I found most challenging, candidly, was part of the due diligence. When you've gone through the whole interview process and you've made the connections and everybody agrees that you're the right fit, the process doesn't end there. You know, doing additional testing, like emotional testing and everything else to make sure you're going to be a cultural fit. So he can manage the expectations with the employer on how to properly manage the candidate so the candidate will succeed and go above and beyond is, uh, I can say in retrospect, excellent. But at that moment in time, very frustrating because you just want to move on and you want to get the deal done. And instead, he focuses on making sure there are no surprises for all parties. So I like to think of him as, you know, part, 
you know, matchmaker and part counselor. But the counselor part is the secret to his success. The beauty is he's got it in a defined process. It's documented. He shares it with all parties. They're all looking the same thing. So everybody on both sides of the equation know exactly what's going on, know exactly where you are in the process, and know exactly what the next step is. So it's repeatable for him, which is great, but there are no surprises for either side, the employer or the candidate. One of the observations Daryl makes in his interview is that, quote, skills are transferred durable fit is very specific, which is something, you know, we've been talking about in this series. So how do you assess a, a candidate's fit? You had talked about doing emotional profiles on, on people, um, because although someone may check all of the qualification boxes, in reality, it won't work. So how do you ensure that the employer and the candidates have those really hard conversations uh, that get to emotional intelligence and get to the culture of an organization to assess the fit? Technically, I'll do the emotional intelligence assessment and be with the finalist. And basically, emotional intelligence is how somebody interacts with their environment. So we see from that, the, the assessment is used for really for leadership qualities and for development, and that helps that way. But to see the, to look at the fit, we will... Like I said, in the interviews, I'm watching everybody during the interview and I'm looking at the different interactions and the nonverbal cues that are coming out. At the end of every interview, after the candidate leaves, we debrief with the client. And that's when I'll call them on certain things that I've seen, that I've observed. And then we'll talk about it and things come out there. So we get information that way. There's also the same thing that happens after with the candidate. Afterward, after the interview, we'll call up the candidate, and then again, I'll call them on certain things that I've noticed. But this finalist, really, um, one of the big things that we encourage clients to do, we get them to go out to lunch or dinner together, even with their families, bringing their wives um, to see how everybody mingles and gets along. It puts down everybody's guard. It's a social gathering. And that really brings out that nonverbal sixth sense that people have, whether or not they're going to get along with somebody or not. In our particular hiring process, I would say there's more emphasis put on the, the fit aspects than even the hard skills by far. Now, that could have been a byproduct of Vanilla Soft and the leadership with the CEO and how he led his company. That could have been David. My suspicion is it's both because I think David understands that you can have the skills, but if you don't have the fit, then people are not going to be happy. Skills are transferable. Fit is very specific. So that process, to your point, was interesting. I, you know, he did it not just in the standardized testing processes, again, perhaps around, you know, emotional fits, um, but also one-on-one. So case study in point, during the initial rounds of interviews, apparently I was, uh, I was the candidate of choice of, of all participants involved in the decision-making process. And then the second or third interview in, somebody, one of the people who had really liked me initially, decided I had said or done something that made them second guess me as a candidate. And that was a surprise to David, as well as other stakeholders in the, in the decision-making process. So they had two, two choices, right? They could have kept on going, or they could have you know, explored it. And they did the latter, they explored it. And then what they decided to do was to have that individual and I go off one-on-one -on -one in a conversation to physically see, were we going to get along? What was the root cause of the disconnect? And, and that was that was phenomenal. What we realized very quickly in this case was the individual said, Daryl, I'm going to travel a lot with you as we, you know, you know, do our thing and we're going to be stuck in airports often. Are you an individual that I can be stuck in an airport with? That's what I wasn't clear on. So once we realized we had a lot in common and we could hang out together, you know, that's not a skill thing. That's a do we get along because he and I were both responsible for revenue. Then it was good. Now you would think it would end there. Okay, the one objecting individual has no longer um, concern. No, it happened again. Once everybody said I was the guy, then the CEO and I went out for a meal to break bread, have a coffee, whereupon he put on the table his concerns and asked me to do the exact same thing. So we knew before the process began expectations and concerns, and we had a game plan to make sure that both parties were able to go into the job 
with milestones and deliverables and outcomes and shall we say permissions and how to interact with one another before the process ever began. So there was multiple times along the way where the soft skills were, were dealt with, but what was consistent from start to finish was that David was there warning me, telling me, counseling me, and I knew he was doing the same thing for them. So he, he truly is a matchmaker when it comes to personalities, which is, I think, the difference between what David does and what so many other recruiters do. They focus on, do they have the hard skills as a match? Yes, he does that. But he also looks at, are the soft skills there? And then he has standardized testing to ensure the soft skills are there and it's not open to interpretation. So I think just the, the small thing that Dave has not has more or less alluded to is that we see them as people. They're not transactions. Candidates are people, the clients are people. We're dealing with their lives, a huge part of their life. And so we want to be careful about that. You have told me about something that you call the Texas Hold'em versus fantasy football as your secret sauce. So can you uh, talk about that a little bit? Texas Hold'em and, uh, versus uh, fantasy football is an interesting uh, theory. I was trying to figure out when I was writing Executive Recruiting for Dummies, how to explain why things fail when you're doing a search. So Texas Hold'em is why things fail. And here's what I mean by that. If you've ever played Texas Hold'em, you know there's 52 cards in the deck. However many people you've got around the, um, the table, you deal out the cards, you see what some of the things are, some of it's hidden. But the point is, there's only 52 cards. That's the entire marketplace. So when most companies and search firms go out to, to fill a role, they'll advertise and they'll advertise and, and they'll get a slice of the market, those people that are looking. And they might get lucky, but you know, it's like Texas Hold'em. You might get lucky with those 52 cards. Whereas fantasy football, I mean, come on, how many teams do we have? We have dozens and dozens of teams, right? We got cards on everybody. You know, we know how, it, we, and we have stats on everybody. So if you look at the, the whole, if you look at your search like fantasy football, where you've got a limitless supply, so you go after everybody, not just the people that are looking, but you go after the entire market. It's like fantasy football. And with, and with uh, LinkedIn, you know, you can look up someone's record. You can see how many you know, touchdowns they've done, how many yards they've thrown for, how many blocks they've done. Um, and that helps you narrow down who you want to talk to. And you can look at the back of the card, find out a little bit more about them so that when you pick up the, the, the phone for the first time, you actually know who you're talking to. It's not just a name and a number in the next dial. You're actually called that person on purpose with the purpose of, of talking to them about an opportunity. So that's that's fantasy football. Anita, you were talking about this, that you actually get involved for the first two, three, four months uh, in the whole onboarding process. Why do you do that and why is that important? Like I said before, it's a difficult time for anybody to start a new job. It's not so much on the technical side that we get involved. It's more on that fit side. We want to have success in this search we want the person to be comfortable the company to be um, completely satisfied with the person that they've hired it's important to do that by the time you get to the end of our process what you have is you started with a complete stranger who's now enthusiastically on board they've uh, they've done their candidate presentation to the entire search committee they've said here's what you said is important here's how i'm going to handle that uh, this is my first 30, 60, 90 days. Are we on the same page? If not, where do we need to adjust? Um, so that there's no waste of time. They don't you know, come on board on a Monday and then spend two to three or four weeks or six weeks getting to know the place. No, they have a tactical battle plan. Uh, they got a roadmap and they're good to go. That's what you get out of this. You get a dedicated individual who joins with enthusiasm with an actual plan that you understand as an employer, that you understand that you know they're going to execute on. And that's what we did with Daryl. And it was, a, it, was, it was a vastly radical plan. It was a radically different plan than what the people around the table originally thought was needed. In fact, the term sales engagement was not a term that was used anywhere in the industry until uh, Daryl came, uh, came in in about month number two and said, you know, we're in the sales engagement 
business. We're not in this business where we've been competing. We're in the sales engagement business. And this is what this means. And here's how we're going to position our company. I tell people, the reason I'm having so much fun at Vanilla Soft is because my colleagues and I are so much alike. We just get each other. You know, so therefore, we're allowed to do our jobs and we trust each other, but we hold each other accountable to outcomes. In other words, we're aligned on the philosophy and, 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 and the metrics and how we approach our day-to-day -day activities. Was that an accident? No. We all know that this was put together very intentionally by David Perry in consultation with what he was told the employer, Vanilla Soft, needed along with his observations of the stakeholders and his ability to intuit what they needed, even though they might not have expressed it. This transition for me, from having my own company to be backing to work for somebody, could have gone off the rails quickly. It's been flawless because we are all aligned. And I, and I look at that starts, that started the day David Perry got involved. So Daryl has been with Benosoft now for uh, almost three and a half years, and he was recently promoted to chief revenue officer. So tell us a little bit about the story of what has transpired at Vanillasoft since Daryl joined the team. I can tell you that um, sales, SQL, sales qualified leads, um, are up by a multiple of, I believe, six. And MQLs, marketing qualified leads, are up by a very um, similar number. So the, the volume of business has more than uh, beat their expectations. A lot of people that we looked at when we were hiring uh, for this role uh, were uh, VPs of marketing and CMOs that were coming in from um, software-related businesses, but a lot of them tele, telemarketing businesses. And um, what Daryl has been able to do um, is uh, not just increase the number of um, touch points uh, and calls going out, but actually increase the volume of queries that have come in asking more questions and, and asking to try the, uh, the software. So that's been the biggest major change. It's gone from an outbound, uh, primarily outbound sales organization to a, an inbound sales and marketing uh, organization. In my first uh, calendar year of employment, I was able to quadruple the actual lead flow from historical track record of the company. Quadruple it. Now, you can't quadruple that just because I'm a rock star. I may be good at my job, but I need to be given an environment. I need to be given the budget. I need to be given the permissions to do what I, need, I say needs to be done. I had that. David Perry made sure that I had that when he, when he matched me up with the CEO. He knew what I needed and he knew what the role needed. That was huge. That was just quadrupling it. And I can look at silly things like social media engagement in the last six months versus the, you know, a year ago, the last six months. Social engagement for Vanilla Soft alone has increased over 600%, right? We look at our website traffic just on our blogs alone, the same time frame, has grown almost 100%. Percent. I was out for a, a meeting with a client this morning, and he says to me, he goes, you guys went from being nowhere to being everywhere. I've managed personally to be coined the hardest working marketer in high tech by a number of people online, but that's not true. All that is is just me doing my job, and because you know, the leadership of VanillaSoft have a hot product and have allowed us to do what we need to do to get the job done. So... What I find so amazing here is, is this is a really important thing that David Perry is going to pick up on. The leadership team here knew they needed marketing, but they didn't know how to do the job. That's why they needed to go hire somebody. David Perry was able to hook up the right individual for the right opportunity such that I was able to do what I'm good at doing. And the rest of the leadership team here and the investors were able to reflect back and say, we don't know how you did it but we're glad you did it. And the reality was, I tell them, the only reason I was able to do it is because you gave me the bandwidth to do it. Okay, so you have two sides there working together. Who brought those two sides together? That mm -hmm. was David Perry, right? Mm -hmm. And he did it because he was able to communicate, manage expectations, make sure everybody knew what the expectations were, um, and that the personalities fit. When David, who had hired us at uh, Vanilla Soft, we were complete strangers. 
Um, I had given him a copy of Hiring Greatness, How to Recruit Your Dream Team and Crush the Competition. And I had given him a copy of Executive Recruiting for Dummies. And he had read them. By the time we showed up for our first um, uh, one-on-one tete-a-tete with the group, and he was asking questions out of the book. And what was that question coming from? It took me about 15 minutes to realize, you read the book. He goes, absolutely. So he followed us. A lot of them did. They followed us step-by-step through the process. And that's why we did it. It, 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 makes it. it makes it easier for everybody to trust each other that we're doing the right thing. And it's safe. It's, it's safe for the company. And it's, it's, uh, it's very grounding. They know where everything's at. They're still in control. They haven't lost touch of the process. It's good. Yeah. You know, we took everything out of the black box, right? The smoke and mirrors is gone. The black box disappeared ages ago. Put everything on the table and... Um, we did it because, you know, Wiley asked us to do the book. And they asked us to do the book because at the time, um, I don't remember how many searches we had done. But, you know, now 32 years later, we're over 1,500 searches. We've replaced six people in 32 years. If Perry wanted me to say something else as he reviews this and he wanted me to comment on his tall stature or his uh, slender physique or <laughs> his uh, very viable heart that doesn't have any issues at all.